Hi everyone, my name is Kristen Armstrong. I'm a mom, an entrepreneur, and a three-time Olympic gold medalist. And I want to welcome you to the world of Zwift. Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift, your number one intake of racing, training, and all the exciting things you can get involved with this week on Zwift. So let's see what we've got on the show today. Matt Stevens and Hannah Walker swing by to chat about the latest round of the ZRL races. Zwift Academy winner Jay Vine, well, he tells us what it was like to stand on the podium at his first ever pro race. There's more A to Zwift. I try indoor riding fuels in the feed zone, be kind to me. And we revisit Carly Taylor's pro rider recon for greatest London flat. Oh, it's that time in the show where I ask you, my wonderful friends, to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell. And while you do it, I'll just hang out here and give you some time. Whoa, okay. Thank you very much for doing that. I'm just gonna take some quiet time before I unleash my inner chunder dragon. Oh, this is awful. Why did I do that? It has been a very busy week in the world of Zwift. First up, Canyon are holding a series of events every weekend in May. One event each day will be led by a top Canyon athlete. And if you do join, you'll be able to unlock the new Canyon bike in-game, which is the very same bike ridden IRL by triathlete powerhouses, Jan Fredino and Patrick Langer, winners of the past five Konas. Ineos Grenadiers are hosting an event on May the 1st, which will let you ride alongside some of their top athletes. There'll be a host of rides and events throughout the day with even some featuring a variety of different challenges for you to complete and each one will be led by a different Ineos rider. The Power Up Podcast is back for another week with another cracking episode. This week's guest is CC Plonqui rider Red Walters, a young British cyclist who will be talking all about how COVID has affected opportunities for young riders across the globe to really show what they're made of and get their foot in the door of the pro peloton. And if you want to get involved with any of the above, you'll find all of the links in the description below. And so, as the Tour Watopia Stage 5 comes to a close, I have three words for you, my friend. Make up week. Whether you missed the stage, want to repeat your favorite stage, check out routes you haven't ridden, or just pile up the double XP, make up week is here for you. Winding Way, Core Climbs, Hilly High Score, Double Dirt, and The Big Boss are all available for a few more days. Each day, until April 29th, you can ride any of the stages as many times as you like. So get out there, pile up the XP, and complete all of the stages before time runs out. I'm chatting to Jay Vine, the 2020 Zwift Academy winner, and now a rider for Albertson Phoenix, who's got his first race under his belt. Now, Jay, before we kick off our chat, huge congratulations on a magnificent second place overall in the Tour of Turkey, which was your first ever pro race. Well done. Um, but I want to know is, how are you feeling now? And has it all managed to sink in yet? Yeah, yeah, it's it's I think it's sunk in now. Like. The, I mean, initially after, like immediately after the stage, it, it was still, it was still a bit like, it, it hurt a lot, not, not, not being able to get the win, um, like all the way, literally all the way to the finish line. There was still that glimmer of, we could, we could, we could still get this even after the sprint bonuses. Um, but I mean, all in all, I, 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 I <laughs> it was a phenomenal eight days of racing and besides the result I, I i really like enjoyed every minute of it like it was just so fun start to finish the racing the whole you know moving the show from one hotel to the to the next every day um seeing different parts of turkey it was it was just amazing and and obviously this as well as being your first race um without sounding too obvious, this was your first time to actually meet your teammates, wasn't it, as well? So how did you, heading into that crucial stage, stage five, uh, what was it like being part of the, of the Alps and Phoenix, uh, you know, lineup with the, with the riders that you had, and obviously the staff, how did you feel um, part of the team? Yeah, like, I think stage five, so we, we unfortunately lost a couple of guys um, at that point on the previous stage, and the the team was still like super 
super like they they backed me completely for the yeah. stage five um like we we rode the stage as if i was like sole leader even though we'd had jasper basically going for sprints and yeah. essentially three or more opportunities after that to go for more wins um i I'm, I'm not sure if the team expected me to win that day but jasper's for certain had had ambitions to win some more stages and i think <laughs> we could have won way more stages if Mark Cavendish hadn't been there. So yeah, a certain um, Mark Cavendish, blimey. Yeah. Oh, uh. <laughs> Who knew he was still fast, you know? <laughs> um, and our goal obviously was to, to win bike races. So yeah. to have the team put so much energy behind me for stage five was pretty incredible. I mean, that must, have, I'd imagine there would have been more than not, more than usual, some some pre race nerves going into that stage five, but uh, but to have those riders around you and have the full support of the team, um, although you're already in good shape, that must have just given you a few more percentage points in terms of your focus and that kind of added pressure as well of not just performing for you, but performing not just for the team, but also for those individuals who'd sacrificed themselves for you as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And to have such a small team at that point, yeah. um, putting so many so many um, chips down. Um, for me in that final was was pretty awesome i'd had like the mechanics i'd had the swannies i'd had eight, like the ds in my ear the whole day getting me ready for that that final climb and i mean yeah i i i got to got yes yes for left me and between between seven k's and 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 three k's it's basically just conserve energy as much as you can on a 10% gradient and yeah. um, make sure you don't, you don't screw up basically um, yeah. get in the right position. And um, yeah, the, the time between those two points is probably about 15 minutes. So there's a lot of time to either start doubting yourself or get in your own head. And yeah, I think the team did a real good job at stopping that from happening. Again, it's a classic kind of uh, commentators, kind of cliche really but jay talk us through <laughs> the last couple of hundred meters uh and the kind of effort that it took and how deep you went going into 500 meters i sort of at that gradient i didn't want to give up any time on the climb because once you give it up it's really hard to get it back i think everyone was at their limit at that point so i thought okay block headwind but we're going pretty slow um if we all launch at the same time probably got a good chance of of, of winning this you must have been i mean i know you were kind of disappointed not to have won the race um but to still come second in your first pro race and end up at that point in second overall um in, in pretty esteemed company um you must have been very very happy yeah absolutely um i sort of surprised myself because it was at, it was after four hours of racing that we started that climb as well yeah so it was it was at the end of five days the longest stage race i've ever done is five days but uh, you ran out. I mean, ultimately, you were second overall. So, I mean, feeling standing on the podium, you know, on, on the proper podium, you know, second spot. I mean, what was that like looking out at the crowd and stuff? That must have been a nice moment for you. Yeah, it was a, it was a pretty amazing feeling. And also sort of confirming that this is 100%, 100% what I want to do for the next 10 years. Yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it was great to watch, Jay. And, uh, and as you said... I think uh, after your your second place on stage five, all of the, I was following you on Instagram, obviously, and you had all these comments and you said that, you know, you and your wife were kind of looking through, you couldn't respond to all of them, but uh, that must have been lovely coming from the, the broader cycling community. Also a lot of the love from the Zwift community, because you are, we, we like to think of you, you know, although you forged your own path in many ways, we like to think of you as one of our own here at Zwift, you know, so that, that must have really, really sort of buoyed your spirits uh, as you headed into the back end of the race, just the kind of overwhelming support that you had as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I had a, had a rider on stage seven, I think, um, just come up to me and, and just start chatting to me. I think he was from the A block team. And, you know, he, he knew a little bit about the Zwift competition, but just like we spent the whole neutral and it was a good six k's i think of, of neutral just just chatting and he 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 recognized that there wasn't there wasn't much opportunity for for guys from our side of the world to to get a to get a glimpse of what european racing is like and mm. he 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 said you know you know, secretly um 
I, I'm, I'm rooting for you to, to win this tour because it's just such a nice story, you know? Like, yeah. you're you're such a nice guy. I follow you on Instagram and you seem really genuine. And, um, yeah, it, it, it's 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 pretty incredible the opportunity that you've you've been given and you're you're showing everyone that Zwift is a, a platform that that can be used to, to to seek out young talent. Jay, it's been an absolute pleasure. Wonderful to see you smiling and in such good spirits. And I'm glad you fit into the team. But most of all, I'm just glad that you're fulfilling your potential. And I think this is just the start, hopefully, mate, of a really long journey for you. So well done, mate. And we'll be catching up with you very, very soon. Take care, buddy. Thank you. Now it's time to get out your notebooks, sharpen those pencils, flick something at the teacher and listen up. It is your weekly A to Zwift lesson. Now pass me that note. B is for badges. I need all those stinking badges. Zwift awards digital badges for your accomplishments. Early on, the getting is good. You earn one for the simple tasks like connecting your Zwift account to Strava, pairing a Zwift companion app, or even giving three ride-ons. But there are some tough ones too. Sprinters like me love the 1.21 gigawatt badge for hitting 1200 watts. Climbers who are a bit crazy go for the Everest badge. You have to ascend the height of Everest, 29,029 feet or 8,848 meters in one ride. Whichever way you count it, that's a big day in the saddle. And if you go faster than 50 miles per hour, the Daredevil badge is yours. There are also badges for completing famous routes, running, and more. So if you're into badges like me, get out there and earn some. We're back with another indoor riding fuel suggestion from you, my friends. And I feel like the kinder I am to you, the nicer you might start being to me because so far you've given me some questionable suggestions. Now, this week I thought one of you was actually suggesting I eat a beloved pet. I seriously did, but it turns out there is such a thing as a goldfish cracker. Who knew? Bubbly Paladin wins with their suggestion this week, a pickle or gherkin for our UK-based friends, goldfish cracker and mayo sandwich. Let's give it a try. Yo, the dish of the day, now where do I begin? Mm -mm. Okay, now, I do have to say that I haven't been eating white bread for a while, trying to keep the old weight down for racing. Um, and I, as I am a massive proponent of the cold baked bean and mayo sandwich, this, well, I am absolutely salivating. This looks wonderful. I was like, well, one of those sandwiches that's impossible to pick up. So let me just try and get it in there. Gherkin gone missing and a goldfish cracker. As you can see, basically looks like a crisp or, you know, chip sandwich, some gherkins and some mayo to top it off. Here we go. That's wonderful. Oh man, that is Michelin five star. That is the sort of thing that I honestly, maybe after a couple of Belgian beers, would lay into. Oh. I, can, I swear, right, if you can, get these things, all the constituent parts, the gherkin, the mayonnaise, the goldfish cracker or something like that, put it in some white bread. I feel the cheaper the white bread, the better, and give it a go. I swear, you will not be disappointed. Oh, baby, I want to marry you. Mmm. Oh, if you've got any more suggestions, maybe like this, keep them coming in in the comments below and your idea could feature on a future episode. Now, if you excuse me, I'd like some quiet time with the rest of this sandwich. Oh no! That's truly wonderful. Mm. I'm telling you, it's truly wonderful. Thank you, son. Do you want a bite? Another week down and another high octane ZRL race day. So let's see the action from the women's race. The Zwift Racing League. The women's race. Courtney Nelson kicking out six or seven watts a kilo. Lewis Adegist of the Ionian Racing Team. This is Svart there of Team at Swedish Swifters. The good and exciting opening sprint. A kind of blizzard of power-ups are being used. Larsen, Catherine Kurik, Adegist in fact. There are only 34 riders in this front group. 
this is Hermanson on at the front now. Nine watts a kilo, but she's gone very, very long indeed. Cecilia Hansen's going to be overhauled on the line by Spardstrom. Team Swedish Swifters, this is one of the best performances I have ever seen from the team. This group continues to thin out riders now, dropping off the back. Catherine Curry heads to the front. She's absolutely romping up this climb. Who back now surges clear. Curry now is coming back. It looks like the rider from I Race Like a Girl is going to overhaul it. What a ride by Catherine Curry to take the win. That was something very, very special indeed. And we also had an enthralling men's race. Let's take a look at how it all unfolded. This is week three of the Zwift Racing League. It is a wonderful course with a proper hilltop finish. Look at the spearhead on the front of this group. Very, very aggressive. Rykart now from the Kirkmare e-racing team. Gumble that just took him on the line. A very interesting long raid sprint there. Spencer Sega from the American has hit out with authority. Vidar Mel takes the win ahead of Hodges. Foldager. Glenn is on the front for Callus Esports. 13.4 watts a kilo wow. from the Norwegian. Ripping up this New York tarmac. What an emphatic victory that was. This is a man who loves a solo effort. We're going to start seeing riders getting dropped out the back end of this group. We had 50 riders. It's going to be split to pieces by the time we get to the top. Look at the pitch. Look how steep this is. They're climbing up an elevator shaft. 4% now. 300 metres to go. Turgles goes again. This man has found some amazing strength. The thrall is there as well. Kirk May comes through on the line. Thomas Thrall confirmed as the winner for Insured, powered by Pedal Power. A wonderful win. What a finish that was. Hey, Hannah, lovely to see you again. But let's uh, reflect back on what was a wonderful round three of season three of the Zwift Racing League. Over the last few seasons, we have been treated to some great racing but this one really stood out for me. Let's start off with the men's racing. Of course, they took on the New York City KOM after party, a really tough attritional race with those, uh, those forward laps of the Gotham reverse. And then that horrible climb to the line and emerging at the top, Pio Auto. I mean, we know they're a very solid team. Second place insured by Pedal Power. But what a ride by newly promoted uh, uh, community team, BZR Sports. I mean, a wonderful ride by them, just showing the real quality of the lower division. I love it when the community teams really step up. They move into the Premier Division and then they step up and they're getting these types of results in only week three of season three. It's so great to see them come together and... They're well deserved to be in this top league division. It's absolutely tremendous. It was a great race around the Big Apple. It was very, very hard, attritional, but uh, great to see. And for Pio Auto as well to take out the, the win overall for the team on the night. I mean, let's move on now to the women's race. Not forgetting the men's, of course, won by Thomas Thrall in that very, very challenging finale. One of the most difficult physically and challenging tactically finales to get right because of the way the climb kicks up drops down and then kicks up again to the line. A really hard one to get right. But looking uh, at the women's race, we saw Team Swedish Swifters really dominate early on. They put a lot of resource into getting those early points. And looking at the rankings towards the end as well, it really, really paid off. We know Heino won it, the most dominant team of the last couple of seasons. They are always the team to beat. But it showed how much um, these points out on the road are important. A wonderful bit of riding by Team Swedish Swifters. Their best ever, I think. It, it is. As a team, they race fantastically. Likewise with Ionian, Los Adegist going for those intermediate sprints, getting second and a first, and really cementing their, their place in into the podium spots, which is, is brilliant to see. Then they had three riders within the top 20. For Team Swedish Swifters, with the way they rode as a whole, getting multiple riders in the intermediate sprints into the top 10, into the point scoring, it really uh, showed that 
their tactic was to go early, get the points on the board early, and then let's see what we've got left for the finale. It worked out perfect for them. Their best result in uh, any of the ZRL rounds. The finale of the women's race was really something to savour. I could watch the last 500 metres on repeat, but what a ride by Catherine Curry, really drawing on her experience. And from a, a neutral's perspective, from pure entertainment, that was some of the best whiff racing I've ever seen. It was wonderful to watch unfold, wasn't it? It was. When I saw her make that attack with just less than a kilometre to go, I was thinking, wow, this is a lot of confidence coming from the former USA road race champion. She's obviously got it, uh, you know, a lot left in the tank and she opened up that gap. She was holding the, everyone else at, at around four or five seconds for a long time. And then Hubak came with around 400 meters to go. And I was thinking she's going to go with straight past her. Curie's going to be left in her, in her dust. But Curry was managed to get onto the wheel of Hubak with around 300 meters to go just as they plateaued. They just got over that steep section and she just stuck on the wheel, held something back. And then with 150 meters to go, she opened up that gap of two seconds. Incredible, incredible. Exactly. Up there with Freddie Ovet, only th uh, two riders, her and uh, Freddie Ovet, have taken three wins over a couple of seasons. Uh, magnificent stuff. It really does tee things up really nicely for a round four, which is our second at Team Time Troll of the season on the greatest London flat. I cannot wait to see the way things unfold because the league is looking quite different than it has in the past, which I think, uh, I think it just suggests and kind of shows and indicates the real depth and strength across all teams. It does. I think also with the, the points for the intermediate sprints and the finish line changing, the way the teams are changing their tactics, also the strength and depth, riders becoming more accustomed to this racing league, being able to race week in, week out, learn from their mistakes, also take the confidence from previous results of previous weeks. It really is shaping up to be the best season yet. Well, Hannah, that leads us nicely on to round four of season three of the Swift Racing League. It is the second team time trial. I cannot wait to see how that one unfolds. Thanks for joining us. The fourth round of the ZRL will be on an all-time classic course, the Greatest London Flats. I've decided to show you one of my all-time favourite rider recons. Here's Carly Taylor. It's going to be a fast one. With the riders tackling, greatest London flat, and it's even a team time trial. We will no doubt be seeing riders selecting some fast looking pieces of equipment. A seven and a half kilometre lead in is pretty long. There's a few undulations early in the race, like Northumberland Avenue. Staying focused and getting up to speed is going to be key here as no one wants to lose too much time so early in the race. The red part of the mall is probably the flattest part of the race. Maybe I should just stay here and cut some donuts around here instead. These long straight roads in London are perfect opportunities for teams to get organized and get up to speed. It's going to be interesting to see how teams use these long roads in London. Some might use their weaker riders to sacrifice themselves in order to get a better team result. Judging by how I'm looking, I think I'm going to be one of those weaker riders. I think it's hard to ride in around here by myself, because I don't know about you, but I like having mates around me to distract me from the pain. When the road heads downhill towards the subway station, I think that's going to be everyone's favourite part of the race. A few sweet, sweet seconds of no pebbling for the real undulations hit. A perfect opportunity if you lost some time at the start or to claw back more and add to your advantage. But when you're going flat out in a team time trial, every little rise feels like Mount Everest. It's about this time of the race where the legs really start to burn and those final 10 kilometers it was like so far from the finish line. Normally, this escalator climb is the perfect opportunity for some last minute attacks. But in a team time trial, it's all about keeping smooth and making sure everyone's together over the top. Everyone's legs are gonna be screaming. But those riders that are feeling strong can really use these kilometers to help gain back time or even further their advantage. Who would have thought 5% would feel so steep? 
When the riders see the river, they're oh so close to the finish line. Only a couple K left. If you get to steady pace, work together, and didn't lose too much time around Sari, you're gonna land your team a whip at time. Almost heading towards them all, but we're gonna take a sneaky left here at the roundabout. There's 200 metres to go when you see those green dots on the road. Here we go. It's done. Right on. And that is it from me, but that doesn't mean your week on Zwift should end here. Why not get involved with something you've seen on the show? And tell us all about it in the comments. We'll see you next time. And until then, ride on. 